Hello everyone, Kasanis here, and welcome to another episode of How to Build Your Character. Uh, I think I'm going to change the name because we're no longer just building characters, we're actually building other things now. Like last episode we built uh, objects, and in this episode we're going to be building environments. So I think we're going to change the name of this series to How to Build... or let's just call it Minecraft in Maya. Minecraft in Maya, that sounds good. Okay, so, in this episode, like I mentioned, we are going to be building sets, environments for your characters to move around in. I know some of you are looking forward to the animation side of things, but it's actually pretty important that you understand that you have your set in place, you have your objects, you have all of your stuff modeled first, everything is in place so your character can interact with whatever it's going to interact with, and you have to build anything extra you're going to build, and then afterwards we'll work on the animation. So we are going to get to animation, don't worry, but for now we're still looking at how to build all your crap first. It's, there's a lot of stuff to do before you can actually even start animating. So there's a lot of different ways that you could theoretically build a, an environment in Minecraft. You could model it, and I've already taught you how to do that. You could use all the techniques that I taught you on how to model your character. Everything in Minecraft is cubes, so it's really, really easy to do. You could build a cube if you wanted to. You could texture it using the texturing techniques that I taught you, and then from there, you could build your, your base or whatever you were going to build one item at a time. If you really, or one block at a time. You could build it that way if you really wanted to. Uh, that would allow for a certain number of things to happen, allow you to break blocks, it would allow you to do that kind of stuff. So sometimes you might actually have to do that. You might have to model things separately completely. Just like you modeled the sword, you might have to model a chair or anything else you might want the character to move around or use. For large scale sets, something that you, you know, say, I really want to build this this city or whatever, you could do that in Minecraft, and we can use a third party tool to be able to, actually it's not in Maya, so I'm going to close out Maya for now, just so you're not looking at it, it won't confuse you. You're going to use a third party tool uh, to import your Maya world into, in, uh, sorry, import your Minecraft world into Maya. So to start with, you guys should download, we're going to go to your Google, and you're going to do a Google search on Mineways, and you're going to download, boom, the Mineways program up here. Download for PC, download for Mac. Pick whichever one you need to use. Now, Mineways is a third-party tool. It has nothing to do with, uh, with Maya and nothing really to do with Minecraft. What it really and truly is, is a 3D printing service program. Now, a 3D printer, if you aren't aware of the technology, is a really interesting thing. It takes 3D data, uh, depth maps and what have you, and it converts that into a physical object that you can hold in your hand, just like this dude is holding the Eiffel Tower. You can build your stuff in Minecraft, and then you can send them the data, and they will send you back an actual physical object of your build. You can say, here's the world I built, here's the house I built, I'm so proud of it, I'm going to put it on my desk, or I'm going to you know, sleep with it on my pillow, whatever you want to do with it, you can do with it. Really cool technology, and if you actually write these guys, they're not associated with me in any way, but if you actually get this done, you tell them, Kasana plays sent you and maybe they're going to give me a kickback maybe give me something cool for free I doubt it <laughs> but who knows right so make sure you say Kasana sent me anyway for now download this thing because what we're going to use it for is to import our world into Maya that's one of the side benefits of using this thing is, is it actually generates 3D data that we can use in Maya or Blender or Cinema 4D or whatever program you use it generates something called objects and the object an object is a universal thing a universal uh, format that all these 3D programs can actually use. So that's what's really awesome. So download this Mineways right now, and when you do, open it up, and you will get broop, this thing here opening. This is what the interface is going to look like. It's really rather simple to use. I'm going to show you how to use it, I'm going to import the world into Maya, and then afterwards we're going to have to break it off for a minute, uh, because I only have 10 minutes uh, in this free version of Bandicam. I haven't actually bought Bandicam. Free version, and we're going to break it off there, and then afterwards we're going to restart with part B of this. So for now, import and build your thing. Here's what we're going to do. File. Bam. Open world. When you take a look at this drop-down menu, this list right here is all the worlds that I have locally for Minecraft. Now, some of these, like Odd World, Medieval, and Verdun, I downloaded off Planet Minecraft just to see if I could actually use these as well within this program, and you know what? It doesn't matter which uh, which of these um, worlds, where you get your world from, whether you build it or someone else builds it, you can actually use this program. It's universal. However, 
Mine weighs, depending on the version you have, and I have a little bit older version here, depending on the version you have, it's not updated for the current block. So you might get, you might have built all this really cool stuff with like 1.6, and then afterwards you're like, oh, poop, you know, no coal blocks aren't in here, for example, I think. Or there'd be different blocks that aren't actually located within, within this program. But for now, let's just open up a Quest for Eden. That was one of my first LPs. It was a super flat world in which I, uh, I created this um, this green space within a super flat desert world. So we'll use this because everything is encapsulated right here. Okay, so you can drag around within this window. I can make this a little bigger. You can drag around with this with this window using the left mouse button, and you can zoom in on a on an area using the scrolling with the middle mouse button. So I'm going to zoom in just like that, and this is the area. Let's say that I want to capture. This is the green space I built in Quest for Eden. It's, it's like a house and blah, 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 everything else in here, whatever, all grass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture it. Now, how you capture it is using the right mouse button, and you're going to drag just like this. Drag it, drag it, drag it and close the area you want to capture. Now you're going to get a window that says some of these blocks are below a certain depth, etc. And you're perfectly fine with that. Just say yes, and what it's going to do is it's going to take all the blocks within that, and all those chunks, and it's going to put them into this. If you say no, then it's going to get rid of some of the blocks. So just say yes there, okay? Once you've done that, uh, I'm going to say file, and now I have choices. Export for rendering, export for 3D printing, and export for uh, schematic. You want export for rendering. When you push this button, bloop, it's going to ask you to save it, and I'm going to save this as, make sure it's saved as a, a, a wavefront object, an obj file, .obj, and I'm going to call this quest for Eden obj, and I'm going to say save, bam, just like that. When I say save, a new window is going to pop up. This new window allows you to uh, put in the information that they would need for actual 3D printing. Now, you can put in a cost if you're actually going to do 3D printing, cost, etc. What we're interested right here is make each block millimeters high, some number millimeters high. If you've used my character and you've built my character, then that number is 16,000 millimeters high. That's what the, based on the proportions of the character that I built, that's the number that I found works the best. If you did not proportion your character the same way, or if you run this and afterwards you say, I don't like 16,000, you come in here and you play with this number. You guys can play with it for as much as you want and find the number that works best for your character. But for me, 16,000 is what works. So I'm going to say OK. And when I do, progress bar, done. We don't need this anymore. Close that off. The next thing we're going to do is open up our Maya, Maya with a blank scene. This is a brand new blank scene. And I'm going to say in Maya, file, uh, import. Where's import? Import right here. Boom. And it's going to bring up a window. Now make sure you know where you saved your stuff. Because if you're in the wrong area and you're like, oh, Cassandra, I can't find it. Where's my stuff? I don't know where your stuff is. Wherever you saved it, Mindways is a third-party program. Wherever you saved it, find it, and then open it. And you're going to see a bunch of things. Quest for Eden Alpha, you know, all these PNGs. And then lastly, you're going to see an object and an MTL file. What you want to open up, what you want to import is this, is your OBJ file. So when I do, bam, I open it up. It's going to open up, depending on how big the area is, a very large file. So there it is. That is the square. You can see that's the square that I imported. Now if I say shading, smooth shade all, I'm going to see a gray version of the world. There's a gray version of my world. And if I say, just like before, hardware texturing, bam, it's going to texture that world based on the program itself. Now this is the world, this is the house I built right there. That's my place. I've got a, a nether gate behind this door right there. So everything I built is actually here. Nether rack, you can see it. You can see there's a couple of issues like the uh, Anything that was a, a 2D uh, plane, like these uh, pumpkin stems and the, the torches and the grass, come in as, as two crossed planes. Uh, but we're going to deal with that in part two of this episode. So for now, you guys do that. I'm hitting nine minute mark for this episode in my free version of Bandicam. So I'm going to have to cut it off right here. For now, guys, thank you very much. That's how easy it is to import your world. 16,000 is the number you want to use if you're using my character. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's my world. I can actually maybe start animating in here if I really wanted to. OK, everybody, I will see you in part B. If you haven't done so, take a minute, leave a comment, ask your question, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe. All right, everyone, have yourselves a great day.